okay, let it be known. I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a home, this ain't a phone. Grind never stopping. We are back with another It Needed to Be Said. Julius, man, I'm feeling great. Yeah. House. Amazing house. great, man. Like but a I, palace. Like a palace, man. But I feel like our guest, he doesn't need an intro. Like, he, he's just that kind of guy. <laughs> if you don't know, he just he just doesn't need an intro, bro. He's that deal. He was one of the best receivers, not four years, but six years <laughs> in a row, he said. Six years yeah. in a row. Facts. Yeah. This guy's a, he used to be a part of the Killer Bees. Antonio Brown, man. Let's give it up for A.B. in the building. Uh, you did. Yes, sir. How you feeling, A.B.? Hey, Cheetah. Thanks for having me on, first off. I'm grateful to be here. I'm excited. I'm in a grateful spirit. You at the, you know, Beehive. You know, you hit a, the A.C. in the in the background. <laughs> yes, sir. A.B., so man. I'm always in at the crib. Man, I just want to say, man, you've always been an inspiration to myself and to mm -hmm. other smaller Thank receivers you, in the league, man. So... Mm -hmm. Why you think I'm small though? You just small, bro. Like, <laughs> See, nah. like, like, let's be for real though. Like, you paved the way for all of us. Like, right. we look up to yeah. you, bro, because That's you, respect. you that deal, bro. Like, you paved the way. A lot of people be like, "Oh, Tyreek paid." No, you, Antonio Brown paved the way. Nah, I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that credit. He did that. Nah, you I didn't pay the way. You know, I think we all just made a way. And guys like you, Ty, I mean, a lot of guys that we could, you know, call out. You know, we just all. We all empowered away, you know. Yeah. I don't think you could, you know, football never had a way in unless you play Optimus. So it's like your heart really speaks on the field, you know, seeing how you make plays, the excitement you bring. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. That's what it's about, man. Putting that shit on. Put that shit on. He say put that shit on. Put that shit on. Hey, hey, that hey, shit on. Hey, and, 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 and just to jump off that, like you say, paved the way. I definitely agree with him. But on the sense of... Like you say, who's who saying I ain't that big? But just a traditional yeah. mindset. Yeah. How was your transition from college yeah. to the NFL with that, the traditional receiver yeah. being what, 6'2", 6'3", six, six, yep. some upward of that, and yep. you coming in maybe just shy of that? How was that transition? Well, the game is all about, you know, fundamentals, techniques, mm -hmm. and uh, being able to put yourself in the best body position. So for me, you know, I think when you're coming from a school that people don't pre preeminent preeminent think that it's an Alabama or a big school mm -hmm. or they haven't seen your film. I know where you went there, uh What's that? Yeah, you know what I mean? It wasn't like a huge it's a it's a D one school that everyone right. should know, but it ain't getting the T V or the publicity when you're making those big plays. So for me I have always made plays and you know the game always come with criticism. You know, no matter if you do a million things right, somebody gonna say you should did a little better. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, criticism and extra with achievement. So I never really paid attention to what other people thought of my game or my stature or what was the normal. Cause I know like, you know, we always trailblazing the game as far as like how we want to impact it. Like I talked to Cheetah earlier. I'm like, Cheetah, when you be making these plays and doing these flips, you be premeditating it like you think about it, oh, right? I mean, you got to. You got to think about gotta it. Got to visualize so, it. Mm -hmm. So as a player, you know, you always visualizing yourself each year, you know, to be better, to get better. And you know it's going to be some criticism, but, you know, you just answer that with achievement on what you do. So guys like myself, guys like Cheater, being able to do great things in the midst of the criticism and the adversity. Mm -hmm. And uh, those things come with the game, and you would really like to answer those things with – your achievement, the all pros, the highest pay, you know, yeah. cheated some of them accolades. <laughs> yeah, like that. let's go. Now they, they talking that same Bro, talk. here's my question to you, though, is why, why you took yeah. your picture at uh, Central Michigan like that? <laughs> yeah, because let me tell you the story behind that. Because growling. I was from Miami and I had an eight pack at the bottom. I had a, I used to have yeah. a permanent grill at the bottom, eight pack, and I used to smile, and a dude told me don't smile. So he pissed me off so much. I gave him the meanest mug I could give him. I like, I was really trying to scare him. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, like, I got to make a face <laughs> that could like spook his ass. Like, hey, you spooked him. <laughs> you spooked him. You know, him, we man. had just won a championship too in 2007 for the school. So for me, I wanted to really put some swag in the pitch I had grew up, the, the poke chops. You know, I couldn't really get a full beard at the time. I was like growing it to like right here. So for me, it was like, yo, 
show my grill with the chops. Yeah. And the camera guy was like, nah, no smiling, with the, no smiling. I ain't never heard a uh, camera shot. They tell you what to do. Right. That's crazy, bro. So I hadn't gave him a crazy mug like. So we talk about Central Michigan, man, yes. and just the yeah. amount of talent that came from Central Michigan. Because you played with yeah. J.J. Watt also, right? J.J. Watts. You got Eric Fisher. Eric Fisher. You got. We had uh, Nick yep. Berlower. Yeah. Yeah, a lot we of got, guys. Uh, yeah. Played with a guy named Frank Zumbo from there. Joe Staley. Uh -huh. Frank Zumbo was my teammate. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of guys that Central Michigan was all hard work, man. So why didn't y'all win games? What's up with that? <laughs> we won games. We was like two times match championship, 2007, 2009. So we was that champions. Like the top? Is that, is, that, is that like the best? Yeah, not a vision. We we beat and everything. We was rated like tw top 25. Our motto was we, we was already, you know, our coach said we wasn't good enough. What? So to us, we we worked with a eminent, eminent, what is the word called? Eminent, 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 eminent work ethic. You know, I be seeing Cheeto put in that work. And it's, you know, anytime too, you see a player in thong shorts with his quads out, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's probably that random one on day to day. Come on, bro. How was that other I'll transition? Just comfortable, bro. Like, yeah. coming from the South, going up to Michigan, you went to Central Michigan. Yeah. Um, I went to law school up there. How was that transition? Not yeah. even just with the weather, the culture, the surroundings. Was it like a, we know it's black folks, but was it like a cultural shock? Yeah, because it had just, to be different. There's a lot of black people in Michigan. They've they never seen nobody ball. with no grill in yeah. their mouth. Yeah, yeah. For now, me, that central they have. Now that probably the first time in like 2007. You guys think I was there? So right. I don't know how old Cheetah was in 2007. He probably was in high school. Cheetah on the track, you know, I was with in like his muscle. Grade. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was in that grade, probably smoking people in the 200. <laughs> But for me, you know, I went to school for opportunity to change my life. You know, mm -hmm. like I wasn't a natural college player that grew up as a high school student with his mom and dad. And like you going to school on the routine and, you know, I know I'm going to get a chance to go to college and everything laid out. You know, for me growing up in Miami, Liberty City, you know, I had to bounce around. My mom man, had a little drama, my dad out of town, a stepdad, I'm probably jacking them up. So I had to be a man at a young age. So for me, it was like, boy, you either go to college Anywhere you could go to uh, change your life or either you get caught up with the wrong crowd and you know how that go in Miami. So for me, I always looked at college like I knew it wasn't going to be a lot of people that looked like me up there. It was going to be cold, mm -hmm. but I know it's an opportunity for me to, you know, make a better opportunity of my life, school, playing sports. You know, so I was really locked in at a young age to be able to know, like, change my life. I got to go to college and really try to do the right things if I wanted to, you know, have my hallways this long. You know? mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to take some focus. About the future, man. Well, you definitely took the opportunity and you ran mm -hmm. with it, man. Talk about it. Like, you got you got drafted, correct? Yeah, I got drafted six rounds. Six round. Yeah, pick 195. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so, like, how does that make you feel, though? Like, all these guys yeah. get drafted in front of you. But, like yeah. you, you prove year after year that you better than all of them. How does that yeah. make you feel? Because I know how that made yeah. me feel. That was like, bro. Like I told you earlier, like we, <clears throat> you know, we want to be the recipients of hate. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that we need hate, but some things happen that you might hate, but that just motivate you for the overall cause. Like you ever seen, like you may play the game and it wanted to make you mad, but you ain't get mad, so things went your way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't get the ball to the third quarter, but you know like you ready to take over the game. The whole crowd know Cheetah ready to take over the game, but the ball just ain't got there yet. So for me, it just, you know, I always just shape my mentality. Like it's gonna be harder. You know, I come from Miami Liberty City, nothing was never easy. And like, I never expected it to be easy. So when, you know, things happen, I just be grateful they happened that way because it keep me hungry. You know, it made me, you know, as a player, you know, because as a player, you know, you see other guys, other first round, and then you measure up. You, you know, you compare them to what you're doing and what you got going. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no matter what no one say, you know, you got to believe in yourself and you got to go out there and prove it to yourself mm -hmm. every time. So for me, I don't ever want to feel like I'm better than anyone because we all got talent. You know, that's why we all in the NFL. I just feel like... You know, I just need adversity. You know, we need adversity. We need hate. We need something that could bring out the best in us. And if like, if I didn't have that, then I probably wouldn't be motivated 
every year to be my best, I probably wouldn't be inspired, you know what I'm saying, to keep going because let's face it, if no one got hate, no one got adversity, no one got something against them, is that how you gonna really test your true character? Yeah. You know what I mean? I know, you know, people hated you when you left the Chiefs. I know mm -hmm. I hated you messed up my bookie money. <laughs> you messed up everything because I knew like Cheetah was getting 10 for 100. <laughs> Five for the hundred. That was it about though. Like what we talked about outside. What it's about, man. Yeah. It's all about setting your family up, man. Yeah. Set, setting yourself up, making sure that you live a great yeah. and happy life, bro. Smart. Making sure you happy. Yeah, you all trust. Me? Yeah, we play this game to change our life. You know, we don't play this game to be better than no one. I don't play this game to be, you know what I mean. Anything other than do it the right way, so I could take care of my family and live good forever. On me, yeah. and you know. That's what playing sports and uh, you know being a professional is about. Yeah. You know, living great after. You know, because you ain't really live your life yet, Cheetah. Like, you know, I ain't gotta wake up and get hit. You know, now I do the hitting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> sir. <laughs> when they gonna hit by when I'm 33? Nah, you the goat right now, so we don't even want to think like that. That's why your lawyer here, he gonna he gonna think for you to kind of keep that progressive. Right now, we need you just being the fastest and the most explosive guy out. You know, I know you had the two fingers, but I need to see the you know, gotta get some tights or something. You got the quads out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> some shoes or something. You know, Cheetah, like Cheetah's a sighting player. You know, I watch him for sure, for sure. One time, you know, I'm really proud Come of you, on, man. Now. Overcoming that adversity. Mm -hmm. Easy. You know, late round pick, everyone was hating on you, talking about the drama you had, and you just, you know, use that adversity. You use that to prepare you in a position you were in today. So I want to come in Cheetah for just, you know, using that hate to get to where Easy. you at, you know? Now I seem like I ain't got no more hate. I need it. Yeah, you need it. I'm just finding just ways to get it. the best out of you, you know? Cause I feel like when people motivate yourself, like how you motivate yourself, you gotta look within and find the stuff that you hate about yourself. When you when you look at your game, you're like man, I hate the way I'm releasing on this guy right here, man. How could I make it a better? To, you know, when you're looking at your intangibles within yourself and you like, yo, I hate something, then you're gonna make it better. So the world is best on ebbs and flow, the good and the bad. So you know, I just make the good look. I make the bad look good, and I make the good look good. Easy. You know? Very inspirational. So yeah, the, world, right. the world, everybody, yeah. uh, the world already knew Antonio Brown coming from Central. Yeah. Like, they really got introduced to who A.B. was yeah. with Pitt, right, with Pittsburgh. Yeah. How was your time with the Steelers? I feel like, man, my time with the Steelers was a blessed time. You know, uh, anytime you were with a great team, winning games and, you know, being a go-to guy and accomplishing big things, you know, that's every player's dream. You know, Cheetah would explain, like, Wanted him to be the guy that everyone could depend on and mm -hmm. the guy, you know, that's moving it. But, you know, I've always been that guy since Central Michigan. Mm -hmm. They sell my jerseys in the locker. I'm a 100-catch guy, 1,000-yard receiver. You know, that's who I am waking up. Yeah. So, to me, it never changed. It was just the change of who was going to see it and what level it was going to be at. But any guy from Central Michigan, part of your teammates will tell you, from J.J. Watts or whoever the guy was, went to Central Michigan with me. They knew what I stood for and what I represented and who I was as a person, you know. But, you know, anytime you are targeting the media, you know, the media is, is a business. You know, they make money off papers, you they know. They make money off them bad blogs. Yeah, we so get the clicks. I just fit a description sometime. But it don't have to be right, you know. Just, you know, journalism don't got no uh, code of ethics. Yeah. So, you know, it's not no... You know, and it's not what real what people say, you know, it's how people feel. You know, I'm outside every day and I know how I make people feel. So it's not about what we say, it's what we do. So what you do, play all effect and how people feel. So that's crazy. So you go from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arguably one of the best receivers. I of am. Your tenor, of your tenor right there. That's a great, you know. So, so then you go on your little war, your, your, what you call it, your, your yeah. little world tour. Yeah. From Oakland to the Patriots. Yeah, to the to the Bucks. To the Bucks. Let's start with Oakland. You signed a yeah. I don't want to get it wrong. A thirty million dollar deal, right? No, Correct. Three, three for fifty four, a thirty mil guaranteed. Thirty guaranteed, all right? Yeah. Like what happened in that situation? Because who who was yeah. the coach at the time? 
Yeah. And that's in that situation, it was just about me, you know. I felt like, you know, the game was about money, you know. As a player, you know, you compensate so much things and it's like when you with a team so long and you just used to being extended, extended, you never get a chance to, you know, get that big free agent deal where you could really demand, you know, the premium of dollars. Yeah. So being at the Steelers, you know, I know, you know, older you get, you know, you could really you can sense the environment, you know, like you probably knew at Kansas City during the year at some point, like, hey, man, I think maybe About my this time. might be my last this one. This might be know? my last snap, right? So, here, you know, as me? a player, when you in tune, you know, you could really, you kind of sense that. And I sense they had a younger player and how they acting, you know, they like leaning towards like building up more than they building up their guy. So for me, you know, anytime the relationship with someone feel unfamiliar, you know, people going to do what's best for themselves. Right. So for me, it was like, Yo, this is time to do what's best for myself because I done seen Donny Steve's break up, players change. I done seen Hans Ward having experience with the quarterback. So, you know, I done sat back and learned from those things and seen like, man, when I get a certain age of player, I don't want that to happen. You know, I done seen Hans Ward like, man, he ain't throwing me the ball. And, you know, the drama that went on with that. So I'm like, you know what? I just see that getting towards that because my value is kind of getting too high. And I'm kind of like getting more like, you know, I'm taking more responsibility for myself more so being a team guy, how you got to be, you know. Yeah. Now I'm, like, doing what's best for me kind of moving. Like, you know, I might not smile in the morning like I usually, you know. I might have a hood up. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I feel and, like there's nothing But you know, it ain't, wrong with it ain't nothing wrong with that to you. But to other people, it's like, oh, he's not the same no more. Like, you know, because sometimes your teammates, if Cheetah always eat breakfast at 7 o'clock, you know, they on routines, you know. Yeah. So they're like, well, he didn't. Right. You know, they constantly eat. You know what I'm saying? Building routines. They don't and watch it now. Of course. So they're <laughs> they watching. Watch so they're now it's like, you ain't bringing the same energy. So for me, it was like, you know, when I already made my mind up in 2018, like, yo, this is the last one. I'm telling people, but they think it's a joke because my contract go out to like 2023. No, I really want to go see Alicia Keys, but it's kind of hard to find tickets to go see my girl live in person, man. Like, and I, I know that it's last minute. Yeah, I had to check out the game time now. You can buy tickets to your favorite events, and it shouldn't even be stressful. You can buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater, anything you can think of. They'll make sure you get straight to Alicia Keys. You know the beautiful part about it? We all know how fine she is. You can even see the view of Alicia Keys from where you would be your vantage point from just sitting in the seat. You'll be able to see where she will be at on the stage. Forget planning in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the date of the event. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CHEETAH for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use the redeemed code CHEETAH for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. So I'm like, you know what? At the end of the season, I'm telling the fans I'm done. I'm telling the owner, man, I love him, but it, it was a good run. You know, all good things come to an end. So I go to Oakland, man, I get a big deal. Mark Davis, I love Mark Davis. I love John Gruden. He's passionate. We got the best offense, whatever, whatever. But in my mind, you know, as a player, you just thinking like, yo, I want to be a champion. You know, I don't really done everything from making the money. You know, I don't really have like $80 million in contracts just with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like. It's time to be a winner now. I already got 40 in the tuck. You know, I just want to do something legendary, like just be a champion. So I call Mark Davis as a smart man I am because, you know, I'm a good guy. I could have just said, yo, my back hurt and just got the 30 million. We played mm -hmm. Denver on Monday night, the contract guaranteed. Once you play the first game as yeah. a vet, mm -hmm. I could have got the 30 to 15 million. I said, no, nah, I'm going to do what's right. You know, Mark Davis went out of limo, stood up on the limb for me when I was walking off from Steelers, and I told him I need $30 million guaranteed right here in my living room, and he did it. So as an honorable man, I told him, like, yo, I don't want to be a Raider. Save him his money. And I got a chance to play with Tom Brady at the Patriots. But they weren't hearing that, though. They weren't just going to let you go. No, nah, he did. He let me go right away. They just let you go. Of course. They saved him money if I get on roster the first opening day. Of the game, he owed me thirty million. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And we made a deal to let me go, but no one ever knew that. You know, the NFL knew that. You know, the people with contracts knew that that I did him a solid. That's why I got picked up with the Patriots for how much? 
10 million with yeah, five million. for five bonus they don't even pay players that mm -hmm. so they did you know what i mean so i did i handled business respectfully you know the right way so i got to raiders and i'm like yo mark i love everything about here i love money but this not championship culture this not the environment i want to be in i love you i appreciate the 30 million but i already got 30. not to be arrogant but i got it i don't need to hustle you i don't need to hustle nfl it's been a great you know enterprise for me to you know so grow I just my talent win right now exactly I so, see it. so i get with tom brady and you know the Patriots got the most intense practice ever like they doing it all one-on-ones wednesday thursdays run block pass block everything and you out there practicing every day yeah everything they want to get i got them because to me it's like now i'm on a war tour to show people like you read about me on tv you saw me in the stadium like here i am you know what I'm saying? So now it's like they get to see like what AB about. Is he gonna know? Is he gonna learn the plays first off? Is he gonna be in shape second off? And could he still possess the skills? So now I go to Patriots. I give them all that. They see the details. They see the focus. And it's light work too. Yeah, this is what I do. This is what I've been doing since '07 when you was in ninth grade. Like thinking about the girl to take to the prom. Like <laughs> I was like, you know, trying to be the best. Like watching, you know, watching players before me you know do it and really like you know right. trying to do it right so I get with Tom Brady and he like yo this shit the best thing smoking since cheetah you know what I'm saying so he loving it because the details like you know these guys got checks at the line two plays where it's like boys alert mm -hmm. no MAs you know what I'm saying real I gotta work at it like though after like whatever so I get with them, and obviously the NFL know we about to go crazy. So they just like, yo, after the first game, they put some shit in the media, make me look like I'm a hawk. Because obviously, you know, I make a fit the description of Batman, you know, black guy, mask, you know, horns and shit. Like, I look like a superhero, like Cheetah. Cheetah, you like an African guy who could just like, <laughs> in a good mood all the time. <laughs> I got to, bro. I got to. Yeah, you bro. always happy, so, bro. I, I never got see to, you bro. I got to stay happy, I stay bro. you happy, dog. Keep smiling, I got bro. to, bro. Nigga done went through so much in his life, man. All he can do is just smile right now, man. Because I'm like so that, blessed, man. bro. Stand with more. family, with kids, with relationships. I this is where that. I am in life, man. You feel me? I got to see you at Plus, peace, I got a, a, a good group of people in my corner who keep me on the right track, too. Yeah, I like to see you catching baths with the kids on your country boy swag. Talk about that No, he a GA, boy. That description, you you yeah. said it a couple of times. That description, you said, hey, I fit that description. Yeah, what? Of Batman and I know we get porn. it, but what? Yeah. What? I, I don't want people to take what you're saying out of context. No, nah, but, you know, people. The NFL is out. No, nah, but so. people, if we're going to take whatever you see out of the context, anytime you see a guy flashy, I'm not saying I fit mm -hmm. the description of someone do wrong. Right. I'm just saying I, I, I look loud, like I look flashy, you know? Mm hmm. I look like, you know what I mean? But you, I, you though, you chilling. But a lot of people don't understand it was you or was chilling. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was like, people don't understand why you gonna catch a helicopter or drive this or you got this big old house. Like people don't understand why you gotta watch that's a million dollars. Cause like zoom in, this is a million dollars. Is it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But people don't, Bam! you know, <laughs> right. people don't know that I got assets and it's like, you know, I got an image and like, you know, for you to be the best, you got to look the best. You got to feel the best. Like, you know, some of my idols was like Deion Sanders. I watched him catch like a helicopter or a jet to play professional baseball and like go to a lockdown, the best receiver. Mm -hmm. So like That's them, the, hardest shit them the people that inspire me like to look elegant and like mm -hmm. really want better for my life because we really coming from the local neighborhood of Liberty City where it's like low income housing. Mm -hmm. So when I say I fit the description, it's like, you know, I look like somebody somebody wouldn't understand you know i look like somebody who you know you might could write this and it you know it might be believable so when i say fit the description just meaning like a lot of people won't understand why a football player who's so good or start rapping or, or go off and be creative because you only got certain colleges in your knees and you can't play that long so a lot of people will call that crazy and stupid to mm -hmm. i'm getting paid to do rolling loud you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying or i'm doing big shows that, you know, people dream about, you know, so I don't take it for granted, you know, it's a mission like I told Cheetah in the studio, man, the same way you visualize making plays and doing big things on the field, that's the same thing in life. When you're in life, you gotta write down great things in life that you gotta write down and visualize that you wanna happen. You know, in rap, I visualize the lyrics, the things I want to happen and, you know, 
It's about living within yourself, you know, letting not letting that outside, you know. What's the word inspire start with? In. Mm -hmm. What's the word encourage start with? In. What's my favorite route? Uh, in. Because everything is about eternal, you know what I'm saying? I'm never affected by what they said. I'm never affected by what I did, you know, because, you know, I'm encouraged by within. I'm inspired within. So, you know, I'm blessed. Anytime you're blessed, you know. Certain live your life, you baby. Yourself, live bro. your motherfucking right. life, right. bro. And don't let nobody stop you from living your life. As long as you happy, bro. As long as yeah. you happy, your kids happy, your family is happy, and you comfortable in the situation that you're in, you live your yeah. life. Because a lot of people, they're going to try to control you and try to control how you live your yeah. life. And it's like, motherfucker, you are not there running no end route for right. me, doing running these routes for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You are not there training with me. I did this. I did this for myself, so I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want to. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So um, you go play with Tom Brady in yeah. uh, Tampa. Yeah. You guys win the Super Bowl the yes. year before. Then you come back the following year. Yeah. Let's jump into you yeah. leaving the football <laughs> field, bro. That's yeah. like to me. That's like the hardest thing ever. Like I don't. Right. I don't think anybody can top that moment. That moment is like. Yeah. I don't I don't know. We debated about that, bro. Yeah. Remember, we were debating about that. Like what yeah. we was testing about what would you have done or what <laughs> who would have done in that situation? Yeah. We went back and forth about that. Yo, you ever have so a moment time. like that? I had a moment like that before in Artemis too. Uh-huh. One time I was in Artemis. And like my mom would like my mom would come to the game. My uncles and my family, they like, they like to see me get the ball. I wasn't getting the ball. My mom was like, yo, y'all keep giving that bitch the ball. Give my son the ball. <laughs> the moments don't get like, play yo. that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, we out of here. But now nah, for me, it's like, man, you you know, being a player, you always know the game going to end. And for me, you know, going on that Super Bowl run, like, yo, man, I wasn't really, like, healthy. I realized, like, yo, my cartilage in my knees is deteriorating. So I went to having to get drained up. Like the night before the games, like wearing a sleeve and really having to persevere and do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? To be like just ready to play. Right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like, you know, these guys seen my heart and like what I persevered through. And they like, you know, I won these guys over. Imagine you get to someone's team and it's like, oh, they don't know me. They just heard about me on, you know, reading about me or seeing me playing. You know, I don't even uh -huh. get introduced to this team. I just land on their team, not even knowing them, winning them over by the plays I'm making and the opportunities I'm creating. And then it's like, you know, the next year is like, you know, first it's like, yo, AB's here. He's staying with Tom. So it's like, you know, they're making me look like a little kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man that's been in the Z over 10, 11 years. Like, you know I mean? I'm not here to boy scout and stay with people and be controlled. Like and I'm coming not, to, and it's I'm not coming like to help not that dude either. <laughs> you know like, what I'm saying? They, they make, they're like minimizing my role off the bat. Like, oh, yo, he's crazy. here. He's staying with Tom. It was like, like I'm just this crazy guy that just came. Like, only way I'm here to help for the Super Bowl. That's Let's it, get bro. it clear. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So they went to like still making like I was like still like some kind of issue. Then they win. They do everything that we say that we're supposed to do. We do. And then I'm here the last one getting signed for like a low deal. Like, I already had played eight games for like a million dollars, like 900,000. And it was like a bonus if I catch 40, 45 catches for like 250 and then 750 if we win. Like, it's like some hocus pocus, like if this just yeah. happened. Like, right. So it was like, you know, I was grateful, but it was like, I didn't think that was really grateful for me. And, you know, when you're a player and you put your all in this and really living it, putting your life on the line and, knowing where you was at. So the next year was like, damn, I see you real value or what they really think of me. Mm -hmm. And the older you get as a player, you realize like, yo, I really can't do this forever. You know, cause I went to getting smart. Like after the season, I went to looking at my cartilage and my knee, like, yo, let me dissect my body, not just from what the team's saying or what the agent think. Let me look at the big picture. Cause I got 1700 pages and like files of, you know, you gonna see where your book at when you are done. But you know, when you look at the big picture, so, you know, when you get smart and I'm like seeing it, so now it's like, I, like I don't want a Super Bowl. I done did what they came to do, so I'm coming back to see like, mm -hmm. what's the next order of business? But you know, you want a Super Bowl on the team and probably was there the next year on the team. You probably ain't see that same fire or that same motivation of they right. wanting that or what my role was gonna be. So now exactly. I'm here coming off a bench, you know what I'm saying, have need, have need. And I'm like, yo man, I'm down there about to kill myself to be out here 
Now I done tore my deltoid ligament and they know it and they suspend me not to try to pay me. So I'm like, damn, these boys really after me on some shit. Like, mm -hmm. like so I'm like thinking in my head, like, yo, I, I can't even play football no more. Like, I'm becoming like a target for like some type of takedown because now I'm like investigated for COVID. I'm like, all these players got some type of COVID or some bullshit, but it's like, nah, I'm the one targeted. I just saw Aaron Rodgers on TV like saying like he had it and did it. My car proven shoulder vaccine is like everything went on. So it was like, damn, this guy just get uh no game. I just got a full game. And it's like, I can't even come to the facility. And then they're like, yo, come anyway. But it's like, how am I going to come to the facility? I'm not getting paid. So it was like, they were trying to play like some type of man. It's that Batman role. Mind bro. games on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I didn't never heard a guy come somewhere where he don't get paid. Right. Oh, me. Like, so now I'm like not getting, now I'm suspended for something, but I'm really hurt, man. I really, I really helped them win the game, Philly game. I tore my deltoid ligament on the, on the pass. I don't know if you know that ligament. That's the same ligament in your shoulder that help you rotate. So if you catch a pass, your, your deltoid ligament, your ankle let you, the rotate you do. You say how you could get up to speed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got good deltoid ankle, man. That means your like arches are strong and all that. So like, I done ripped this. So really, I can't put my foot in the ground and really stand up. I'm running like without a hill in the ground. So I can't really maximize full power of my glute to really get out. But I can still finesse because my technique is sound. So now I really get hurt and I really find out like, yo, first off, Tom Brady got me working with his guy, Alex, his trainer. He's not a doctor. He don't read the MRI. So like he digging in my shit, like thinking like he finna rev me up to play. But my ligament tore. So it's like... I can't really play at all. So now I'm like, so this is how God works. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been a blessed child, like, go through a lot of trauma, but it always worked out for me, you know, because that's you that's know what I'm is, saying? I got bro. a pure heart. So <laughs> these boys, like, you know, I'm hurt. They put the COVID, I guess, suspended. They tell me, come. Now I told them I'm not coming because now I already see they was trying to, like, take me down the wrong way and I was really official. So now I meet with Tom Brady. He like giving me like talks. Like he think I'm like a narcissist. I'm like, what, bro? I really been over here low volume because I really supposed to be turned up. Like I'm really a go-to guy. I'm like really not like I'm the head. Like I'm not ready to tell. Like I'm here to get these guys inspired. Like I'm really coming off the bench, playing while I'm hurt, oh, draining my I'm the knees. energy, baby. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I'm the spark. So yeah, you now you're not seeing me for who I'm here. So I'm like meeting with him and I'm seeing him like talk to me like. If you if it's all us in the room, like, you know, he gotta get a little, it just can't be all about you. But I'm like the guy here with the lowest salary. So I'm like, yo, what are even you talking about? It's not like you threw to me in the game over 20 targets, 15 targets, I'm like on TV so. 12. But I'm suspended as well. So it's like, I don't even know why you, you know, you should be mm -hmm. talking to me from a support standpoint, not from a like a controlling. Because you know, if you look at 2021, I'm making like crazy highlights in the beginning of the year on their team. Like you ain't see that guys taking the ball on the on a drag route and going 21 miles an hour scoring. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, when you got a guy that's doing that, I'm saying like, at least give him more opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. I'm not here to play a long time. Like, you know, I can't. You, I'm here to make highlights. That's why I play the game too. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Since a young and I expected the ball since I played Little League, since I went to Central Michigan, any college I ever been, even when I went to Alcorn State, in uh, 2006, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I went to Alcorn State. You could get film from people who was at Alcorn State University when I was there as a uh, walk-on to get a scholarship. And they told me I was a prop. They wanted me to stay. And I was like, you know what? I'm bigger than this. I caught the Greyhound from Jackson, Mississippi, all the way to North Carolina Tech to go to prep school. So, you know what I'm saying? Antonio been on the mission of greatness to pursue it and achieve it. And I already accomplished it, you know, but people don't understand and know your full story to know what make you who you is or make you wire how you is. So it's like, when you don't really know the whole story, you only getting a piece of where they started from. So Tom Brady and these boys, like, you know, they talking to me like I got a selfish impact because maybe the plays I'm making, like I'm standing in David Allen, I got like 10 cars out there. You know, I'm having different models come, you know, but that's what I choose to do. Yeah. It's not who y'all, that's not what I'm saying y'all need to do, but. This is what I do. So I don't need mean, people bro. to sometimes respect you for what you do. No, don't change Not you. Not try to like, you know, be your dad. Like my dad is touchdown Eddie Brown. Like my dad is like, like the NFL, not my dad. Like, and sometimes my dad can't be my dad because I'm a grown man and I'm someone's dad. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
I got to hold myself accountable. You know, sometimes I got to judge my dad off principles as well, because as a man, we live on principles. So when a man is not treating you, you know, seeing me for who I'm is, you know, I can't see him for who they is mm -hmm. because I'm a man too on my own. So once this guy digging in my ankle, he don't even know my shit is like tour. So now it's a conflict between me and him and the trainer of the team. Cause it's like the trainer of the team, like, you know, he got to say what it is. Mm -hmm. Now they don't want to say what it is because they don't want to let me know that I'm really fucked up. And it's like, they got to pay for this. So now I suspended the four games. Look how God worked. I come back, all their players get hurt. One guy pull his hamstring, one guy tears ACL, one guy just all of them guys hurt. The guys who run the offense, who get the ball, like in one week, all three of them get hurt. So now I'm coming back to play against Carolina, bro. I probably shouldn't bluff playing, but I got so much hate, you know, the hate. You know, there's some shit that you done been through and it's like, you ain't even supposed to even go through this. Right. But it's like, you know, you got to go through it because it's like a purpose. So I'm like, yo, maybe this the purpose because they all the guys hurt, now they need me. Now I'm coming back and I'm half hurt, but I'm like, yo, I got to play because in my mind, it's like, I know it's a bigger picture. So I play against Carolina, I go for like a hundred. I go crazy, I, get, I think I play Gilmore. I'm giving them like crispy routes, major angles, square shoulders. Heads, shoulders, sticks. I gave them a clinic. Like, you know, you ever, get, I know you put on a lot of clinics. You know, mm -hmm. you just, your route's yeah. just working. Yeah. Like, everything clicking, the ends that I got everything. But I noticed, like, when I'm in the game, like, if you go to the film, it's like, yo, they're trying to get me off, but it's like, still, like, if I'm your guy, all these guys hurt. I don't went for 100. Get me to the box. Mm -hmm. If we close to the box, bro, give me a nugget. Like, I'm over here running stats. I'm trying to be the greatest. I'm not saying I'm trying to be selfish and just get all the balls because I know the balls got to spread out. And it's like, it's a game. You got to play the game that it's played. Like, you can't campaign the game. The game fall, how the game fall, right, Cheetah? Mm -hmm. You don't go and say, yo, give me these passes. Mm -hmm. But on certain plays, you expect certain, you know, it's ran this play for this certain exactly. block. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I get a little spicy when I feel like they ain't trying to work with me because I don't experience that, you know, at the Steelers. So when I see the energy going towards that, then I got to fend for myself. So after the Carolina game, we going to the Jets. And it's like, you know, I already figured out I was hurt. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm on so much to it all. They done shot me up with. You know, I'm half, like, I'm Batman now. Like, what you took I the could pill? do. No, nah, I did or, the or shot. Shot you in the I ass. did the shot, yeah. Because I feel like the shot made me more, more matter. Because I. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You a football player, right? I got that shot. Before. So it's like, you hurt. It's like when you know you hurt and like you really can't do what you need to do. But it's like, yo, sometime the way you finna psych yourself out, like the shot finna really give me the Batman energy. Right. Like, so, if, <laughs> so I'm playing with the shot and it's like, I'm doing this shit every game and you realize like, dog, I'm really fucked up. I shouldn't be doing this. I just played the game. I went crazy. But I still see that they not really trying to really help me build who I am. And I'm right here in time sacrificing my whole leg to be like, bro, I could really, and you really not giving me the energy at all. So like, we about to play the Jets and this week I'm really hurt. Like, so I'm like taking pictures to the coach, like coach, man, are we going to win the Super Bowl, man? I think I need to just take these last two weeks at least like recover up so I could give you my best when we to the time that I mean the most and we here to win the Super Bowl. So the coach like, hey man, we ain't resting. So Tom called me like, yo, this week, man, the Jets, man, they sweet, man. I'm gonna hit you with like 10 to 12. So he done gas me up. So you know me, that's all I need to hear. Like, yo, you gonna throw me the ball? This is like me saying like, I got a new crib. Like, you know me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? He done geek me up. So I'm like, yo, I'm already really fucked up. So I'm like, but you know, as a player, like if you fucked up and your and your team around you supporting you, you might suck it up for the team. Oh, yeah, like, you, you know, suck what? it up for the for the, for for the, the game. So it's right. like, yo, Tom Brady, done hit me up. Like, yo, this a big week. So I'm like, fuck it. I know my shit fucked up, but it's like, yo, if you gonna fuck with me like that, why not? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I done dressed up, suited up. I done got there. You know, I got there to the state. Once I got to New York, I already felt the bad energy because now I done, I done sent the coach the mail. He telling me what we ain't doing, why my shit hurt. You know, Tom gassing me up and I already know they been faking me the whole time I was suspended. Like I just went for a hundred yards and they guys was hurt. So I know they just trying to make it seem like, man, they just keep them going for what we could get out of them. So I already know they treated yeah, me like- know I'm, that's the plan. Of course, like they treated me like I'm a little dog. So it was like, so now I just see it's like sideways 
And then Tom Trainer, he like, he don't want to work with me no more because now he feel like I'm working with the, the team that the guy who know the MRI, who know, who can see what's really going on the inside of my leg. Why he mad for like? Because, you know, he he trying to really compete against this guy to get his job. So it's like two training rooms. It's Tom training room and it's the team training room. But Tom and them never gave me no bread. They gave everyone else the bread. I got a deal from Tampa Bay. It ain't come from these guys. Mm -hmm. And then I'm paying these guys 100000 for him to work with me during the year. But it's like... Bro, I already got paid. I got a $2 million salary. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, these boys like skinning me and they supposed to be the guys that's having my back. You know, like Cheetah, you been an old guy in the group. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't charge guys that's your guys. No. Because we want you to be your best. You being right. your best help me. Mm -hmm. So these guys actually charging me to work with me. And it's like, the team actually paid this guy to like work with the players. So he, I'm paying him on top of the payment from this, and he's not That's even crazy. going out his way. Then before the game, Tom, my, my guy, one of the mutual friends with me and Tom, like, yo, go see him before the game, man. He's going to work with you. You know how you was before the game, bro. You ain't really trying to even give nobody your energy. No, I ain't trying to do nothing. Imagine. So now I'm going to work with him. He's just like hugging me like he can't. Yeah. You this guy on my body with bad energy. Like, right. he don't want to help me. Like, right. what the fuck you right. hugging me for, bro? On me, bro. Well, I got this, a game to play, my nigga. Exactly, but I already told you the energy was like this. The guy wouldn't even want to leave and give me no treatment. You know, I'm hurt. So it was like, these guys don't even care. So now I come playing the game, I'm hurt. Like, I'm in my zone, I'm super hurt. And it's like, yo, I might hurt myself more. And they're they not really trying to put me in a good position. Like, I'm not out here to hurt myself. I'm out here to help you guys win. I mean, getting the ball, help you move the chains, get in the zone. So right now, we had a different time right now. You guys not trying to see none of that. You guys is mixing me with like, he don't want to work with me. I'm paying him. You don't want to throw me the ball and you making me like I'm crazy. So it's like, I'm crazy? Fuck all you motherfuckers. I'm out of here. Drum roll, please. Do this, I'm feeling... I feel like giving a hat away today, man. So look, check this out. Pristine Auction is the most trusted sports memorabilia and collections with auction website. All you have to do is sign up on pristineauction.com using the registration code Cheetah to be entered to win a signed item by me, yours truly. And you get $10 off of your first purchase. If you missed that, check the description on this episode. You'll find the link right there. Auction on pristineauction.com started just $1 each day. And there are thousands of signed items available. So you win signed authentic items and signatures at affordable prices. They work with the most trusted authentication companies in the industry to ensure all items are offered 100% authentic. Use registration code Cheetah to save $10 on your first purchase. So you can win this hat right here or Something else signed by me. Sign up on pristineauction.com using my registration code Cheetah to be entered. Sign up now. Fins up. Let's go. Man, cause that receiver code is crazy, man. You, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, um, Scotty Miller. Yeah. The receiver's core is crazy. So talk yeah. about your relationship with Tom Brady. How, how how do you think it is? Do you guys still talk? Yeah, it's like me and Tom Brady had a football relationship. You know what I'm saying? You know, outside of football. Outside of football, we had a mutual friend, you know, like, me and Tom really don't got a lot in common, you know, besides be great at football, you know, I feel like a lot of people could say you friends, but like, you know, friends are the people that know your family, you know, know your kids mm -hmm. and, you know, congratulate you and tell you, you know, happy birthdays and really support you, you know, I feel like, you know, that's life, you know, life, you know, everyone that's not going to be your friend, everyone you work with, everyone you play with, everyone, anyone you grow up with, you know, we all outgrow each other. We all, you know, that don't mean we hate each other, you know, but we're not calling each other every day and texting them. But it's been like that since 2021 when, you know, you know what I'm saying? The whole series of what went down, like telling me get knee surgery and, you know, if you don't, good luck. But it's like, you know, that's life, man. We work with people. You live with people. Life goes on. We all got a life to live. We don't hate no one. There's no bad energy and no negative vibes. It's, you know, we all have a stint in each other's life and life go on. Now, that is the answer a lot of people We're going crazy. wasn't expecting. Right. Yeah. Antonio Brown, man. A, B, dog. You're giving yeah. us some exclusive, man. I Come got, on I now. Yeah, that's cheetah. This is a cheetah show, man. We yeah. did. We pushing it overly. Yeah. We got to tell you, you know, the truth, you know. Speak to, the Jews, you know, and that's what the podcast for, you know. That's why I was grateful to, you know, do this, just to be able to express the real, you know. A lot of people don't get a chance to hear the, the whole side of the story or other people's points of view. It needed to be said, not a, bro. Not a, 
we talked earlier you've been dropping nuggets since we got here for real yeah so like the business aspect of yeah. it do you think i don't, I don't think the fun left but yeah. do you think uh there was a concerted effort to say all right this is the bad guy leaving pittsburgh going here going there this is the yeah. bad guy because at some point you realize it's a business to them. It's personal. This is my childhood dream to play. Yeah. And it's a dream come true. But once I started treating it like a business, just like they treating me like exactly. a business, now we got a problem. <laughs> you think that's, that had a lot to do with it? Man, all these guys in the NFL, they know. You know, they know what it is. But some people play ball and some people have balls. And, you know, you know, you are who you are. You know, you know what it is. It's a business. So a lot of people misconfuse what it is. It's a business, and anytime you taking care of your business for yourself, it's gonna be naysay. It's gonna be drama mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. know they want you to. It's the NFL, and it's an NFL PA. Mm -hmm. It's still the NFL, so That's you true. know you gotta fall victim to the business of how they run it. But anytime when I start doing, of course, when I start doing what was best for me, you know. Of course, they, you know, that's when the naysay coming. That's when the drama coming. That's when the suspensions coming. You know. That's when all the hate to me, started coming. To me, he self, he to me so personally, you know, yeah. stuff like that, as a, as a lawyer, I look at the obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in any situation that I've seen, when somebody say, I want out, yeah, that's when I always look at it like trade value, right? How, how much value, how much money can we get this person? Because y'all value is up here. We already know they only going to give you what they want to pay you, but your value yeah. is up here. But that's when I look at stuff like, all right, if this person been making your franchise this amount of money, winning games for you, yeah. but you got all this negative stuff in a book somewhere, so if they ever say, yeah. I want out, journalist, boom, negative ad, negative negative report, well, negative report. They're going they to hit you with everything. And it like, just automatically I mean, you can, you can study out. every player. Look at Lamar Jackson right now. Right, right. Yeah, but a lot of people don't want to speak up because no player want to mess up their own pockets. But right. my pockets can't get messed up. Right. I mean, they already messed up. They lumped up. So I don't have no bias Shoot. to say it one side. We just oh, I spoke on that. You know what I'm spoke saying? On that situation. I don't give a fuck. I either. don't have a bias. You know what I mean? So I don't care, but I could just, you know, say what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a part of the NFL corporation, so I don't have to, you know, play some games or fall fit them to say what it ain't or what it is. We know what it is, but at the end of the day, you know, we all making a living. So we all make our living different, and we all decided how we want to make a living. You know, I wanted to be the great player. No one forced me to play ball. I made it a commitment and do it. I did it. I knew what the, the intangibles, I knew what the business come with. I seen football players, you know, after they was done playing, how their lives entail. I seen sports agents, you know, how they deal with players when they done playing. So I already seen the, you know, the outsides and ends of the game. So in my mind, you know, I never wanted to limp off, limp away from the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wanted to walk off on my own too. And some players, they say, oh, when I win the Super Bowl, I'm going to do it. And some players get hurt. And they, you know, so each each player make their own destiny on you know, how they decide it. And, you know, NFL will make it if you don't decide it. You know, I just was one of those players that decided mine. Mm -hmm. You got to walk away from the game when you want to walk away. Yeah. You yeah, think more players should do that, treat it as a business? I mean, I don't want to treat, I don't want to tell no player what they need to do, you know. Should, a lot bro. of, a lot of. But a, it would a, a lot of in the long run. a lot sure. of players' situations ain't the same. You know, a lot of players not won't be me a cheeto where they you know mm -hmm. they get blessed with two and three contracts. They win Super Bowls, and a lot of players may not. You know, the game right now is a different game, man. Players are getting traded more likely than often. You know, players going to new teams faster than what it is. You know, the game is you know a lot you know different now with the sustainabilities and players being. You yep. know, of a franchise for a long time. You and know? the cap space is getting growing yeah, each and so every year. Like, so you, it's, a, it's about money, man. It's about money and everyone handle their business in regards to money their own way. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't tell a player who ain't got none who's trying to make a life. Like, mm -hmm. this ain't what's the best thing because mm -hmm. for him it is. But, you know, through this game and through the level of growing as a player, we all face a different situation at different moments. So. He's a player that's going and trying to be something, you know, just, you know, live out your dreams. Easy, man. So you go from the field, mm -hmm. you go from running off the field, obviously. <laughs> booming. <laughs> you booming. Running off the field. field. I'm booming. To being a, uh, what, are you, what are you, a rapper? 
No, I'm an entertainer. I'm a mogul. Like, I ain't really you know a rapper because, you know, a rapper is just like someone, you know, a rapper is like someone that's covering up an inside like a rapper. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm an influencer. Like, you know, I represent oh. culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm how has that transition been? How, is it, how, how has that transition been? I think it's been amazing, man. It's like anytime you could be creative and express yourself at the highest of create moments to just be more creative, you know what I'm saying? That's what life's about for me, you know, just growing. Mm. And for me, being able to grow within myself, expressing myself as an entertainer and as a product, because I'm like a product, you know, I come with a band, you know, stay setting. You know, we don't come just by ourselves, just, and we were a voice of the people, man. We made people feel good, like what we saying. We not pushing out no negative. We just pushing out heartfelt, encouraging stuff that made people put that shit on. Cause like, you know, we just get a feels out and the acronyms to the world that just keep people encouraged. So I'm like, I'm like an encourager or like mm. a representation of like, you know, adversity or overcoming of just like pioneer of like, a pioneer of the culture, like, you know, we moving it forward. The new age football player that <clears throat> got real entertainer value, mm -hmm. you know, because it's never been someone that could really do that. Because most players, like, you could see through that shit, like, you know, they faking, like, you know, everything I ever did was like to my utmost heart and it was like serious. Like, you could look in the person's eyes when you know, are they joking, are they serious? Like, a lot of people be doing shit, but like, you know, they joking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we do stuff wholeheartedly. And we're not trying to be nothing, or we not trying. We been like making songs. You can ask some of the guys I went to school with at Central Michigan, Tyler Reed, Danny Bowden. You could ask these guys where we recording yes. music in the studio. Yeah. And like really working at it. So anything we doing it, we just doing it better now because now it's a business. Now I get the dis distribution money from video. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's a real business. We're not just a rapper waiting on the show. No, we make the product video. Give me the bag. Shout out to Roy. Shout out to Larry Jackson. Shout out to Larry Jackson who just bought video for a hundred million. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a lot of business since it is. So don't get it twisted. We're not just doing this to be rappers and be covered up. We really outside and we really inside, encouraged and inspired to put this out for the people. You see them boys. I seen your handshake too. I got excited. Yeah, 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 she yeah. came through. You know we gotta show love for you, put man. That shit you know on that video you know coming, man. I was inspired you, seeing you and your uh, fellow teammate. Y'all boys was real explosive too with the handshakes. Come on, it was man. good seeing you and Waddle this year. We gotta man. show boys love to you. But if we could go back to football real quick, yep. yeah, who who are your top five receivers of all time? Mm. Top five receivers all time. Damn. You know, I hate to rank players because like every player is so great in their own way. So I just hate that like That's we always, you, Shannon Sharp. we you always, mean. you know what I'm saying? Like we always trying to put each other against each other as crabs in a bucket in regards to, oh, this guy did this. You know, when we walk in stadiums and you see Cheetah, you see ABs, you see Terrell Owens, certain guys, you know, like they going to give you their all Come for on, four quarters, 60 Easy. minutes. Easy. So for me to rank players... You know what I'm saying? I feel like they all great in their own way, but for me, I write players that really got value like at the football. My top five players, not just players that play good in the game, players that still, after the game, they still elite. Deion Sanders. Yeah. You know, I want to say, because Deion Sanders could get out receiver and really mm -hmm. score. He was like a Tlaib to lead, to lead with like, like a sort of like Deion. Like I seen Akeem to lead in 2007 on Kansas City versus Central Michigan. Like he get out the receiver and like score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Nasty. Like, nasty. Like, he had receiver. Like, Deion Sanders would go to receiver and training camp, run every route and, like, be Yeah, open. I can see Deion doing that. So, I like Deion Sanders because Deion Sanders still got a brand after football. You know, uh, he always was a, a, you know, he was commentating. You know, he was a dual athlete. You know, he's still coaching, influencing culture. Jackson State, he's at a new uh, school Colorado. now with Colorado. Yep. So, Deion Sanders was a pioneer for me because after the game, he's still elite, you know. For me, I love football players because we all great and we all crazy to be able to be this great, but we got to sustain the sustainability. Could you be great 10 years after you done after. playing? Yeah, yeah. So for me, Deion Sanders, uh, Michael Strahan, mm -hmm. you know, Michael Strahan, you wouldn't even consider him a football player. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But he was a Super Bowl champion he did win the and Super Bowl one of the, the greatest defensive ends all the time. So. Michael Strahan, you know, he still do the entertainment, still online. Like Good Morning America right now, ain't he? Yeah, yeah he's Bro, a big in entertainment. Everything. So 
Michael Strahan got to be one or two. There's no order. There's just like no order of this list or no five. It's just pioneers of players that we can learn from that after they stopped playing, you know what I'm saying, they kept it going in some sort of major way, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Dion, Michael Strahan, who else we got? You know, Aaron James was the guy who took mm -hmm. care of his money, was a guy I really respect from here in Miami, you know. He used to live in a hotel when he played in Arizona, man, just saving his money, just being a great <coughs> player. You know, I know he saved a lot of money. He do some special things in Orlando with his right. sons and kids giving back. So shout out to Aaron James. Like, like if you see Michael Strahan, you want to know, he like, I'm not saying he in the streets are doing nothing wrong. He had a great career. I'm just saying pioneer the culture with him doing something that we could say what he do right now. Mm -hmm. I couldn't pin it to nothing. You know, I'm not saying he's not doing nothing, but I'm saying, I'm not saying he's doing something that's like, yo, after football life for Joe did, I don't know what that is yet. So you, know? you so, so what you saying is you, you can't sit here and name five great receivers, Jerry Rice, T.O., yeah. Chad, yourself. Yeah. Chris Carl. Nah, I don't really, I don't really, I mean, those those guys, we was great receivers, like, of course, but it's like, what else? I mean, guys that all run routes and catch the ball, we all did it. We all scored. We all put up the stats. What else? That's how I feel. I feel the yeah, same. Like, way. at the end of the day, you ain't going to remember his stats. Like, you know, nobody cares what stats you really, you know, at the end of the day, you remember it for your own self evaluation, but at the end of the day, you know, we played the game for a greater cause than some numbers on the paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, life is more inevitable than what we do. You know, it's about how we make people feel. Like, if I go outside right now, me and you walking on the beach, people gonna get excited. You know, because we make, I'm, I know I don't make them feel a certain way, you make them feel a certain way with what you do. But I'm out here like hands on with the people, so it's a different feeling. You know, when people could relate to you, because a lot of people gotta deal with a lot of stuff and just keep going. Man, you know, so I like OG a lot of receivers, talk, but I can't really name five. Music, bro. Music, like, yeah. Do you feel free? Man, I always felt free, man. Like, you know, I feel like when people feel like they work too hard, they ain't got mm -hmm. enough free time. Mm -hmm. You know, my life is made within myself. You mm -hmm. know, my time, my calendar. I can choose who I want to deal with, who I want to be with. You know, in life, a lot of people. So they love you and they love you, but you know, Jesus had twelve disciples. They all left him. So it's like. You know, I'd rather just be live my truth by myself and whoever I decide to at that moment, but I don't advise you. You know, each, we each pick our own life, but right. I'm not here to tell people do what I do because they're not at the level to be able to do what I do, you know? Mm -hmm. I put a great career in front of myself to be able to live mm -hmm. like this. You know, I had to have the right team to be able to protect myself to sustain this. So for me, you know, I wouldn't advise no one do this unless you can work yourself in this position or, you know, being free is a mentality, you know. Mm -hmm. It's an attitude and, you know, your freedom and your liberty is everything, you know what I'm saying? Your mental health and your availability everything. and your- It is you know, everything. Some brother. people do what they gotta do. Some people do what they wanna do. Some people do what they can do. You know, the purpose is for you to do is just stack up all you can on the can and then sit on the can. Mm. So, you know, I did the right things in the NFL to protect my money, to put myself in this position. So, you know, I could, I could, you know, I got the freedom to be who I want to be, you know, not do the wrong things because I'm civilized and, you know, I know it's a higher power that I'm living for and a higher purpose. But, you know, I got the, you know, I could call my own shot, you know, I could choose to be who I want to be. It's not, you know, freedom is within us, what you decide. Mm -hmm. So I decided to play football because I want to be great and I want, I know I could have a better life for myself. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I did that. So I never did anything that I thought that I had to do for no, you know, everything I did was premeditated for the right reason to put myself in this position. Mm -hmm. And um, shout out to Vidya for distributing that song when I walked out the field because I've been at that track uh, mm -hmm. pitting out the palace since like 2019. Mm -hmm. So the thing about music, even like the Wayne track, you probably heard that Rolling Loud. I've been had that one since August last summer. So the thing is, you know, being able to be embraced by, you know, your fellow brothers who in music, because, you know, these guys, like our brothers, you know, I listen to these guys before the game. Cheetah, what you playing? What you playing before the game? Like music, you that inspiration. So for me, I'm loving making stuff that people could get encouraged by. When I see Cheetah score the touchdown and him and Waddle hit the clap and put that shit on, like it made me feel good. Cause I'm mm -hmm. like, damn. That's my shit. Nah, not even that's my mm -hmm. shit. It's just like, because 
it's bigger than just me, you know. I don't just do stuff to be like, nah, that's mine. I just like, yo, I look up to y'all boys. I respect y'all game. Uh -huh. And I admire y'all having fun with the game because mm -hmm. that's what the game, because imagine, bro, you just broke a tackle, smoked some dudes. Like, mm -hmm. not everyone could do that. That's admirable. So when I see that, it's like, damn, that boy Cheetah's still burning these boys at year nine and 10. It's like, yo, who else was doing that? So that give me inspiration because at heart, I'm a player. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I look for dancers to do and it give out energy. Like it make it make my son happy. Like, dog, if you ain't even notice, if you go upstairs, like I got your picture in my in my son's room mm. from the Pro Bowl. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> my son look look up to you, dog. They really cause that's you give out energy, bro. bro. Like bro. the excitement of the plays you put on and make people like it make people happy. So when I see you do that, put that shit on, like, yo, life is bigger than me, bro. I'm 30. Like, bro, you a model for like explosive players. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I study the game of explosive players right now, I'm gonna name it right now. You, Cheetah, you got uh the homie up Jay in Cincinnati, the one. J Jamal Chase. Jamal Chase explosive. Whatever he get the ball at, he could go with it right now. A bit nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, you know what I'm saying? These type of guy gives off energy. Uh Tyler Boyd, my homie over there in the slot, he yeah, give he off energy. Mm -hmm. Uh Higgins, the tall, slim kid, give off energy. Who else? Diggs, energy. You see what I'm saying? So the excitement. Or the playmaking ability make people happy. I got I got a question. Mm -hmm. You dropped the freestyle. <laughs> yeah. I think you was close to the camera, right? You, you yeah. dropped the freestyle. I don't remember which one it was. Who was the guy dancing on the couch? Oh, that was my cousin. <laughs> my cousin, he usually be around here. My cousin, like, he like my everyday. So, like, right. he hyped me up. He drive me around. He like my right-hand man. But that freestyle, actually, that people leaked out, yo, that was way back in 2020. Right. So it was right. so old, but it's like, that's the thing about music, champ. Like, it could go viral any moment. Any moment. Because, man, I made, I made the song, put that shit on, like, in April 20th. I probably made it in, no, I made it in February at the Soho with Kanye West. Imagine mm -hmm. you run off the field, bro, and, like, Kanye West, like, yo, pull up to L.A. I'm working on Donda 2. I need you here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you need me there? Like, all right, we there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm there. He got, like, 8 o'clock meetings with just, like, full creative team, full, like, designer team. So I'm like, man, I'm like really into this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being creative. So I played him a song. He like, yo, get with ch uh, Fat Money. I played him my song Champions with Fabio. When I ran off the field, I yeah. stayed in New York. I didn't even go home. Cause I'm like, well, yeah, you I'm went to the Brooklyn game, didn't you? Yeah, I went to see KD. <laughs> I saw KD, I went to KD's house. I was, bro, look how God worked. I saw KD uncle after the game in the suite. He like, yo, AB. KD literally just came down. Like, if you know KD, KD don't really talk that much. Mm -hmm. Only if he know you and he like you. If he, if he, he know you genuinely, he might give you a big smile, but he not really going to converse unless he know you like solid. So he, his uncle sent me in the, uh, the VIP in the Brooklyn. He like, yo, KD literally just came downstairs and was like, yo, they doing AB wrong. Mm -hmm. Yo, I went to his house after the game. Chilling, like, yo, just getting embraced by my brothers. Because, like, yo, we all look at each other for our, our greatness of your commitment. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It take a lot for Kyrie Irving. You know what I'm saying? The commitment, the greatness. Years and years and years, you can expect greatness from him. Basketball at the highest level commitment. Listen up, y'all. I want to tell you about my favorite new place to play fantasy sports. Underdog Fantasy. They're available almost everywhere in the U.S. In Canada, California, Florida, and Texas. Underdog makes it so easy for you to win up to 20 times your money in a single night. You just pick higher or lower on any two to five players to build out an injury. Here's who I'm riding with this season. So for Aaron Rodgers, I got him throwing upward of 28.5 touchdowns this season. And of course, Patrick Mahomes, I'm picking him to go higher than 37.5 passing touchdowns this season. Visit underdogfantasy.com. Don't forget to register with my promo code Cheetah or follow the link in the description. Sign up today with promo code Cheetah and we will match your first deposit up to $100. That's right. That means if you put in $100, you get another $100 for free from us. Must be 18 years or older and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Are you concerned with your play? All you got to do is call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org.
Because a lot of people were trying to yeah. go after you too, though. And it was like, oh, AB thing. got CTE and this and that. And all of my exactly. friends were asking me. They was like, bro, you in the NFL, bro. How's AB? Yeah. How is people saying AB is? And I'm like, bro, people yeah. need to let AB be AB and let that man live his life. He is arguably one of the yeah. best receivers in a, of my generation anyway yeah. that I seen with my own live eyes. Yeah. So let that man live his life, bro. Like he ain't doing nothing to yeah. nobody. People you, just... People hate what they don't understand, Cheetah. Like people want you to be a certain way. They told they told the best basketball player in the world he's number one right now to shut up and dribble. Mm. So it's like, you know, people gonna always talk about you when you're not doing right. what they suspect you to do or what they want you to do, or you doing what's best for you. Anytime in the world when you start doing what's best for you, you're gonna see who really got your back because not a lot of people got your back. You know what I'm saying? Like they may have your side, but like only God got your back and like you only could test that when you're doing what's best for yourself and you will never know that until you go independent like I'm 1099 like I run my own w 29 business booming for real I do my own filing you know E9 like I send W9 what's your EIN number you know I run my own business so like when you an independent guy and you your own self-sufficient like I get paid for music so I gotta you know what I mean? Run the budget and organize it. I don't got the financial advisor. So when you know that's the case and you running your business by yourself, you know who's going to be with you. You know, it's not a lot of people out there when you're doing what's right for yourself. You know what I'm saying? But anytime you're working you for someone you're else, about. you got to fall victim to what they want to do. Like, people don't hate me. They love me. They're just mad because I'm not playing football. But that's a good thing because that means when I play football, I left an impact on them. If people mm -hmm. never talked about me, that means you don't matter. But when they still mention you, oh, what AB doing? You seen that other one hand catch? I was looking at you up there. Like, she was sweet, though. That shit was sweet, <laughs> though. That shit was sweet on stage. That's what I'm saying. Like, we still got the game. We still got the goods. We just got to spill them out a different way. I don't have to run in the field and go crap back somebody or go deep for the touchdown. Now I could do it other ways. You know, I could go in the lab and create for, you know, Cheetah to score this touchdown and be happy about this. You know what I mean? I could call Cheetah like, Cheetah, how you feeling, man? Family vibes, okay, I can make, how you feel when it's like fucking grind time and week, week 15, my nigga, your knees hurting, like what you listening to to keep, what I could say to make you motivated because, you know, that's what I think, you know, how could I encourage my kid? Like how could, you know, cause kids gonna need struggle. My kid, you know, if I keep, you know, just giving his mom everything she want and, you know, how my kid gonna overcome adversity because, you know, this world is ebbs and flow. It's not gonna be good. And then, you know, people gonna talk about you, the way you rock your hair, the way you speak, the way you look. But we all got that right to that prejudice because, you know, it's America. You might like your girl with, you know, however you like her, but you got that option. Yes, that's that's so, 100. That's 100, man. So, you know, he, you know, anytime you deal with, you know, you gotta value yourself, first off. Mm. Anytime you start to value yourself, you know, people gonna, people ain't gonna like that because they feel like you should have a certain value. Tom Brady want me to value myself at a receiver, you know, a, a Z receiver or an X receiver, but like I'm bigger than that shit. That's just small. You know, that's just a small time of my life. You know, I don't take that for granted because that's what connect me with people that would got people to know me, you know, the game. So I never want to disrespect the game or ruin it for the next player or make it seem like it wasn't my everything because you won't be out here at 18,000 square feet if I didn't play football or play the game or if I didn't have haters that spec negative on my name. You know, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't star rapping even more if they wasn't hating because like you need that like i told cheetah like you need people you need naysayers like jesus needed the 12 disciples to turn on him because you know that's what had him endure the adversity that he was going to face because like man he already and that's why i think what yay is like man we know what type of world we living in we know the people that we around they just decided all you know what we wearing or what we got going or what's the deal or what's the money you know that's just the outside surface you know what I mean? So, you know, it's only, you know, life is made to live on the inside. So, you know, he's finding other ways to, you know, pile and live life more, you know, cultivate life more for the for our kids and generation. Cause, you know, a kid, your kid ain't gonna, you know, how he gonna be cheetah? You know, he didn't struggle like cheetah. Like, what was yeah. your struggles? Like, what you had to go through? Mm -hmm. Some made you be this crazy to just go on a race and run people and be this fast that like you had to have some of dopamine and some of drilling right, that's bro. driving you. Like this man come to my house talking about racing. I'm like, bro, how my knees set up? Like I'm not too <laughs> Owens. Like I don't need to go viral or make yeah, some Yeah, I'm trying to race. I'm trying to race. 
Like I know you fast, like we could race old schools or like fast cars or like some cool <laughs> vibe, but like we can't be in the grass running, bro. Like we need to have a camp if we're gonna run in the grass, you know, bring some cool kids who like who would like to run with you. Mm-hmm. Because like me running with you, like you should have raised me five years ago. I would have I would have rolled you up mm. and smoked you like a joint. Mm. I saw you racing with McCall Hartman, but like he's not a fast player, like. Oof. I like him, but it is what it is. Like fact, I'm fact, him, bro. Fact. I'm not here to like judge players, but like <laughs> nah, he, I think he if he Hartman, I thought he was faster, but when I saw you race him, I was like, damn. He gotta get his quads bigger. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the quads. So who influences your music? You know, obviously, yeah. you know, coming from Liberty City, you seen it all. You did, yeah. you are a part of the culture now. When yeah. I say part of the culture, I'm not talking about just football. We yeah. know football influences, but we know. Yeah where we all grew up and where we come from, yeah. black community, music yeah. influences the rappers or the artists, the of creators, course. the black creators, they really influence the 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 land, the I lay understand. of the land when it comes to the black community. So who influences A B? Who influences your music? What what's in your playlist that gets your creative juices yeah. going? I listen to a lot of Kanye, a lot of EPs, late registration, you know what I mean? A lot yeah. of you know what I mean, like a uplifting music. You know, right. a, lot of, a lot of Lil Wayne's back in the day, squad ups. Right. Yeah, Lil Wayne. You know that squad up, huh? Come on now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And some of the, you know, Lil Wayne and those guys, like the squad ups, and you know what I mean? Those inspire me, you know what I mean? Kanye West, late registration, those pump me up, you know what I'm saying? To let me know, like, you know, to be encouraged, you know what I mean? Don't worry about what people saying, like, know who you are and do what you best at doing. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know what I mean? Anytime, like I may put that shit on with Kanye at the Soho, him working on Donda 2. Mm-hmm. So he just, you know, anytime you see someone who like, you know, not, you know, using that same football structure as, you know, you got a meeting at eight, it's like, yo, we waking mm-hmm. up at eight to meet with engineers while he's playing the beat, we talking and having like a fellowship right here. But, you know, it could be a bar that you said that he may like and take out and put it in there. We going to the fashion show, like, you know, doing different stuff, just just being a creative genius and being a pioneer where you could. I bet that lifestyle is crazy. Yeah, you could though. be, you know, yeah. I get paid to look good and just relax, you know. Before I just, you know, get paid to go get sweaty and bleed and dominate the field. So it's like, it's different things. And it's like, you know, it's, it's more relaxed and chill. Like we go in the studio, we make a, if you smoke, you smoke, you can have a couple drinks, have a talk. And then we record it like that. You be like, damn. So it's not like you go to meetings and we got scripts and you you got these plays and oh, you're walking through, you run through. It ain't that much intensity, you know, it's more like, you know, we could talk about something that's realistic and put on the track, you know, like, you know, when we were yay, we always be fresh. So we're like, yo, put that shit on. He got the dresser on, like, yo, I'm about to go put that shit. So it's like, we can make something in it and you make something and it's like in a moment, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like every touchdown to every highlight of everything you did is like a moment. So the same thing with your songs is like, if I created this and this the time or this the energy I was in at the moment of yeah. like that creative spirit. So it was like, it's like have a little specialness to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. AB, I really got to say, everybody has you wrong, bro. Facts. Like you are- <laughs> Keep them wrong, man. We're not here to prove no one. <laughs> Only thing we want to prove I think, like he said, yeah. people hate what they don't understand, and 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 when it doesn't, yeah, they clearly don't cheetah, understand him. Go cheetah, this into their mold of what If you get, is. that's why I said, you know who taught me this line right here? Uh, what is his name? Who owned Robert Kraft? Robert Kraft taught me that right the there. Patriots owner. The Patriot mm-hmm. owner. When I met with him, when I signed to the Patriots, he said, "Ab, you know what? We want to be the recipients of hate." That means you're doing something right. He said, you know who my best closest friend? He called me and asked about you. He said, Donald Trump. That's one of Robert Kraft's closest friends. He said, you know, he get a lot of hate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So anybody who of influence who's doing something is getting a lot of hate. Our job in life is don't worry about what people say about you. I remember they had this saying back in the days, sticks and song could break my bones. But words, words never. will never hurt. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, if people talking about you, you got some type of value. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so... It's all about, if you, like I said earlier, inspire and encourage, the first word is in. So it's an inside job. So I'm always inside myself at peace. Like I don't get myself caught up what people say because at the end of the day, I'm blessed. I got my health, I got my life, you know. I got a lot of families, you know, you know. That's what it's all about, man. And that's what, you know, if you're true to that, 
Yeah, no, no, it's murder, man. That's what it's all about. A B. I just want to say thank you for coming on the show today. Did, right? If there's right, anything I can do for you, man, you already know the cheetah got you, dog. You just Love know that, home. man. Julius, you got anything? Nah, man, just the openness. We we yeah. one thing we always tell everybody when we started the show. Y'all got a million fans, and they all they get to see is the helmet, the jersey, but they don't get to know the backstory. They don't get to see you guys being vulnerable and understand that the obstacles that they may go through, as they say, oh, we're we're not anybody because they're somebody because they see y'all on TV and they got to understand that they are somebody too. So to be able to see you guys be vulnerable, especially you in this in this setting, yeah. to be vulnerable and tell your side and really mm -hmm. encourage everybody through your story and what you've been through about mm -hmm. how the media portrays you to let them know it, it, it's a brighter day. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about what other people say. Yeah. Live within yourself. As long as you know you're great, Just live your go dream, be great. Man. And yeah. don't don't let it affect what you got going on. Exactly. So we'll, we appreciate the vulnerability, AB. Yeah, man. Sincerely. I don't think I was even vulnerable. I was just saying the truth. You mm -hmm. know, just inspiring people to live out their truth. Don't let people affect them or what they say. You know, I'm never affected what people say, you know? Right. People gonna always have something to say. If you look good, you, you know, you're not good. You know, the purpose of life is living within yourself and, you know, don't be consumed with what others say, you know, be inspired within yourself right? and be encouraged. Right. So now this is my favorite part oh, yeah. of the segment. Yeah. This is 10 questions with Cheetah. Oh yeah, 10 piece. <laughs> Quick little 10 piece, man. She said she want a 10 piece nugget. Ooh. You ready? Let's get it. Now these questions are random, are random generated by AI. Artificial it, intelligence? There you go. I don't even know what AI mean. I say Allen yeah. Iverson. Let say Allen Iverson came up with these questions. Yeah, so, <laughs> artificial. So they could be anything. This. Yeah, hit them with me. Hit you them ready? Me. Yeah. What is the funniest corporate business screw up you have ever heard of? Uh, the the the, the did you say the uh, corporate screw up? Yeah. The biggest corporate screw up. Yeah. Whoever made that chicken box commercial with uh. Jay Rice, man. <laughs> that was some bad shit, dog. <laughs> For him to be the greatest receiver, like, bro, you got chicken bar helmets, like. <laughs> I like it. I like it. With Chaz, my boy. What's your favorite, what's your top three favorite hip hop artists? Uh, I like Ye. Mm hmm Ye. Yeah. And Ye. And Ye. Nice. If you could erase one past experience, what would it be? I probably won't erase nothing. I probably add to it. Come on now. Make a longer script. Who is your biggest inspiration? <laughs> Deion Sanders. Out of all your plays that you done had in your career, yeah. what's been your most favorite? Like, what's been your most memorable? Probably the last one I made, you know. You're only as good as your last play. There you go. So, but like the most memorable one? I think it's been a lot of memorable plays that I made, so I really can't pick one. But I ain't gonna lie, that I one where you kicked that pony in the face like that. <laughs> See, that was a good one, but my whole plan was jump over him and scope. Why you kicked him though? Because I, you know how you running in your mind telling you. See, you do the peace sign, so it's a little like you, you know, you know you gone. So you like me, I'm running the ball. He the like last guy, and I'm like, yo, I need to jump over him because this is gonna be like some sports center Reggie Bush. And like my mind saying this, but I'm like moving with this so fast. So now I go to jump and he not even ready. Bro. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> so you ain't ready. Your mind moving too fast <laughs> for your body. But like I would say one time I hit up to 21.6 miles an hour. Uh -huh. I wanted, I was telling you to do this too, because like you a fast guy, but you never you do the back flip after you score. But I can do a front flip. I know what you're finna say. Remember, I would I yeah. went like 21 I, seven and just hit it like from the foe, you know. That man finna do a one and a half and land on his stomach. No, but don't don't don't, don't do that though, Cheetah. Cheetah, you in nine nine years. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, right don't now. do it right now. Yeah, don't do it. My knees, man. Yeah. Make sure you ice out to every practice. That's what Randy Mars taught me. Randy Mars gave me some jewels, you know. He gave me some jewels. Where the hell Randy Mars been too? She, you know, Randy Mars was a pioneer player, but we don't really see him. I don't even see him on TV. He was on no Monday more. Night Football, but then he disappeared. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. See, I, I need even... to see like Randy Mars partnered the game. Like he should be doing something cool that we could be like, damn. Oh, he up there. He up. But there. he told me, you know, he a receiver that never had no like ACL injuries. So he always told me to ice his knees like Neither. before the game, after the game. So always ice after the game. Yeah. After the game and after every practice. 
That's what I'm gonna start doing then. Yeah. That's Jules from Antonio Brown himself, Mr. Yes. A B. Yeah. You feel me? I appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Thank you it's been all. a blessing. It's been an honor. Thank you for the jewels you dropped. So to mm -hmm. all the young players, man, I just want to let you know. Business is booming. Mm -hmm. And put that shit on, man.